Git is a version control system that is used a lot by software engineers in order to track changes between different files you may be working on. Each time that we make a significant change to the software, such as adding a new feature or fixing a bug, we can then commit these changes. This makes it easier if we make a mistake to revert back to a previous working version. It also makes it simpler when working with other engineers as Git makes it easier to merge these changes together. Branches in Git can allow us to work on separate features without having to make these changes to the main project until we're ready. So for example, we might want to add a new feature to our project such as a new web page or a service so we can branch out from the master and start committing our changes to the feature branch instead. Once we're satisfied that our feature is complete, we merge these changes back to the master branch. This helps us encapsulate our changes from one feature into a separate branch and can allow multiple developers to work on different features at the same time with a little more ease. We may also want to push our local code commits onto a remote server. So we can use a service such as GitHub to be our remote server. So locally we'll add files to our repository and commit any changes that we want. Uh, we can then push these changes to GitHub. We can also go the other way around where we pull code from GitHub to our local machine instead. This might be useful when we're working with other teammates and we want to get their updates to the code. So to get started, you'll need to download Git. So you can go to git-scm.com forward slash downloads. I'll link to that below. And when you're on there, just choose whichever version that you want based on the operating system that you're using and follow through with the installation process that it shows you. Once you have that installed, open up a terminal, so either CMD or PowerShell, and you'll see that when you type in Git, then you can see that it's shown a bunch of commands. So that shows that it's installed. Before we start using Git, we do need to do a little bit of setup and tell Git who we are. So to do that, we can start off by typing in git config global user.name and then type in your name, um, your first name and then your last name. And then we also need to do the same for your email. So just do the same again, user.email and then type in your email address. And that's just telling Git who you are. So we're first going to create our repository add some files to it and commit these files like we talked about at the start of the video. So first let's go to our file explorer, create a new folder um, where you want to create your repository. I've called mine git tutorial and I've opened my terminal to that folder. So to initialize our repository, uh, we simply have to just type in git in it and this will create a new empty git repository for us. Let's go ahead and make a file um, so let's head over to the file explorer and what we can do is we can right click and just create a new text file. For now, we'll just call it uh, hello world. We need to add this file to our repository. You can see that if we type in git status, the new file that we just created shows as being untracked. We need to add this file to our repository by typing git add and then the name of our file. So hello world.txt. A little shortcut is that if you do have a lot of files that you want to add at the same time, you can just add, uh, type in git add and then a full stop. That will add everything from our folder into the repository. So when we look at git status now, we can see that the file is to be committed. Now that we've added the file to, rep to the repository, we'll want to commit these changes. We can do this by just typing in git commit dash m and then we want to add a meaningful message so that when we look back at this we can easily tell what we did in this commit so for this one our commit message will be add hello world add add the hello world file and we can now see that if we look at our git log we can just see the commit that we did if we wanted to make some changes to the hello world file we just created we can open it up and add some text we can see that when we type in git status, the file has been modified, but it says that the changes are not staged for commit. So we'll need to re-add this file. This will add it to our staging area. Files that are staged will be added to our commit. So we can do this once again by typing in git add and then followed by the file name. We can then commit these changes by doing git commit hyphen m. And then once again, our message this time will just be to add some text to the hello world file. So when we have a look at our git log, we can see a list of our commits and the top one, which our head is pointed to is our latest commit.
So another useful feature that Git has to offer is the ability to branch. As we mentioned before, we may create a branch while working on a new feature or fixing a bug without releasing it to the main project straight away. This is useful as we may decide later that we don't want to add that feature to the project. It also makes it easier for multiple developers to work on the project at the same time. So to create a branch, we can just do git branch. And for now, I'll call it feature one. We're currently in the master branch, also known as the main branch sometimes. And to switch over to the new branch we created, we type in git checkout followed by the branch name, which is feature one. This now means that we can make changes to the project and commit these changes to our new branch without them appearing in our master branch until we decide to merge the branches back together, which we'll get onto in a minute. But for now, let's add another file uh, called feature one stuff. It doesn't really matter what the file name is. And we can see that when, when we've added the file, our git status is that the new file is currently untracked. So like before, we have to use git add to add the file back to our staging area. So let's now commit these changes with a meaningful message again. And when we look at our git log, we can see the commit that we just did. So you might be wondering what happens to the file if we switch back to our master branch. So you'll notice that once we switch over and we look in our file explorer, the file is gone. And this is because that file is not in our master branch yet. It's only in the feature branch. So if we go ahead and we, we merge the feature branch into our master branch using the command git merge feature one, if we look at our git log, we can see that the commit from feature one is now part of the master branch. Uh, we can also see that if we look in the file explorer, that our file is also here. So another important part is being able to push our code to a remote server. We can use GitHub to use this as it's free to use. So to start off, you'll first want to create an account on GitHub and then navigate to github.com forward slash new. At this point, we can create a new repository. So go ahead and give your repository a name. I'm going to call mine git tutorial and then press create repository. So it shows us some useful commands here, which are pretty helpful to have on hand when you go off and do this on your own. But for now, I'll show you uh, what we want to do. We want to now add our remote repository on GitHub as the place that we want to push our code from, from our local repository. So to do this, we can use the command git remote add origin followed by the URL of the repository from your web browser. To see a list of the remote connections we've just uh, added um, and that exist for our local repository, just type in git remote dash v. So we can see the one that we just added over here. So to push our changes to GitHub, we just need to type in git push dash u origin master. As this is our first time pushing, we'll need to prove to Git that we are who we say we are. So for simplicity of this tutorial, just click this sign in button that pops up when you're prompted, but in the future, you can always add an SSH key to your account. Um, and this will just make it faster and a bit easier in the future uh, without having to log in and authenticate with this. So once you've clicked the authorize button, you'll see that on the terminal, it says that our branch was pushed to GitHub. So if we refresh the page, we can see our files and our commits to GitHub. And that's pretty much that done. These are all the basic commands that you'll need to know to get started with using Git. I'll leave this list of commands in the description so you can easily refer back to them if you need. Um, if there are any questions about what we've talked about, then feel free to ask me and I'll try my best to answer them. Thanks for watching.